to heal the sick, hour seven. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm Charles Hunter, I'm your teacher for the day. We're speaking on uh, how to heal the sick, teaching from the fantastic only book of its kind, How to Heal the Sick, by those prolific authors, Charles and Francis Hunter. You can have what you say. Glory to God, <laughs> hallelujah, praise the Lord. To our knowledge, this is the only book that's ever been written in the history of Christianity telling you how to go about performing the work that God, uh, Jesus said to do by the power of God, and that's healing the sick, casting out devils and such. Praise the Lord. We've got an exciting one today. We're going to speak, uh, be speaking out of chapter number uh, 15, Casting Out Devils. Hallelujah. Now, uh, these little few points we want to, want to bring out even before I start teaching. First of all, don't be afraid of demons. If somebody about six and a half feet tall that weighs about 200 pounds more than you and a boxer and a prize fighter and a wrestler come up and they start to attack you, run. But if a demon that's eight foot tall comes up to try to attack you, you look him right in the eye and cast him out. He has no authority. Jesus absolutely, totally, completely, and forever defeated the devil when he went down and took those keys away from him out of death, hell, and the grave. Jesus Christ won, and he lives in us, and so we are winners. We have nothing to fear of demonic powers, not one thing except the lack of knowledge of how to do it and the lack of power in the event you're not filled with the Spirit of the living God. That's where we need to be. That's where we need to work on earth. You're not dealing with people, you're dealing with demon powers. All right, now, you cannot, some people get up, in the name of Jesus, I cast every devil out of the city of Houston. Now, you can't do that. The reason you can't do that is God doesn't do it. God gave the devil permission to be prince of this earth, and the devil has free reign to an extent that we can only control him in relation to circumstances. Jesus said, cast the devil out of people. He didn't say cast the devil out of the world. So don't get the idea that you can bind Satan's powers. He's got demons scattered all around you at all times. But you don't have to fear. You've got the power of God. So don't be concerned with them. Just when they come along, cast them out. Don't spend your whole time dealing with demons. Simply deal with them quickly when you, uh, the Spirit of God discerns them to you. Cast them out. Keep talking about Jesus. Don't talk about devils. Lift up Jesus. Lift him up all the time. One of the greatest lessons God ever gave one time, Francis and I were ready to go on a weekly television program. We were going to produce it, our own program. And uh, so we were all set to go. And uh, our pastor got up the next Sunday morning and uh, told the story of a woman hearing a funny little snicker in the television room where her 13-year-old daughter was watching television. And so she went in to investigate why this was such a peculiar little life and they were uh, producing live sexual intercourse on television. And when uh, she saw that, she was horrified. And she turned it off, she called the television company and complained, and they said, if you don't like it, just turn the television off. You got plenty of knobs, uh, turn it off. She went to our pastor, told him about that. He mentioned it in the congregation. Inside of Francis to me, they're welled up. We're going to fight pornography on this television program. We're going to see that we can do everything we can to stop pornography. And God so gently spoke. And he said, I'm not a God on the defensive. I'm a God on the offensive. You talk about Jesus, and I'll take care of the devils. Hallelujah. You see, put your mind on Jesus, not on the devil. He doesn't deserve it. But if he comes along attacking somebody, it's your job and my job to get rid of them out of that person and to teach that person how to stay free of the devil's powers. Hallelujah. We had a, a situation, uh, well, a, a speaker, I'll put it that way, came through the City of Light a couple of years ago. His name was Howard Pittman. Howard Pittman was, uh, if I remember right, a part-time policeman, a part-time preacher, but he died with a massive heart attack. And he went on up to heaven, and then he, God sent him back and put him back in his body, and he lived to tell the testimony. God said, go back and tell us. Don't be concerned with denominations. He said, I'll open doors, tell this story. And so Howard Pittman shared that, uh, that when, he was, when he died, in the, I guess it was in the hospital room, where he was, when he died, he said when his spirit eyes opened, there were just literally the whole area filled with demon powers, with vicious demon powers. But he said he went right up through those and he went up to heaven. 
and God allowed him to stand at the gate of judgment, at the seat of judgment. And he said every 60 seconds, every one minute, there were approximately 2,000 people that had died, that their spirits went up to heaven to be judged for eternity. And a horrible thing, he said, the most horrible thing I've ever seen in all my life was when Jesus had to say to 1950 out of 2,000, depart from me, you cursed. I never knew you go into the everlasting damnation in a pit of hell. Jesus has to do that. He doesn't want to do that. But we're responsible here on earth to see that he doesn't have to do that. We, the people, we, the born again believers, we have been commissioned to be the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have all authority in heaven and earth, but we've got to do the job. God's not going to do it. Jesus is not going to do it. He commissioned us and ordained that we should be the one that preaches the gospel and casts out devils and heals the sick. That's us. And we're the ones that have to do it. If you're interested in seeing 1,950 people a minute go into the pit of hell, don't ever open your mouth about casting out devils or healing the sick or preaching the gospel. Just forget it. Be, be filled with apathy and you'll see them all go to hell. But when you get up there, uh, you're going to find the blood of all those people on your hand if you don't get out and do what the Lord Jesus Christ told us to do. Now put that not in a condemning way, but just to try to shake anybody that's listening to this. We have a responsibility here on earth to get people into heaven permanently. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, you now we're teaching on uh, casting out devils, but you can be sure that he that is in you and me is greater than he that's in the world. And that means the devil himself. Okay, now I want to start off by uh, reading and from our book, this is chapter 15, starts on page 135, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to page 167. Uh, where in writing this book, I summarized something about demons that I think will give us a, a little bit of understanding of what we're dealing with when we deal with demons. They're called demons, they're called devils, they're called evil spirits, but whatever they're called, they're still the devil's tools. They're fallen angels. Some people feel that there's another a group that's not the fallen angels. I could care less. You've got the same instruction to cast them out. They do the same kind of work wherever they come from. I personally believe they're demon angels, the ones that got thrown out of heaven. It starts about uh, two-thirds of the way down. Demons are invisible, bodiless creatures that have the ability to move about wherever Satan sends them. And they can hover over us, surround us, attack us, put thoughts into our mind, put diseases into our bodies, or even cause us to lose our minds and become insane. Those are some of the examples of the work of the devil. They can be present at our birth or as we are formed in the belly of our mothers and cause defects in our formation. Being spirits who live forever, they can transfer from one generation to another and thus cause diseases or defects which may be in the form of genes or deformations. They come against our flesh to try to control our souls. We must use all the understanding we can get and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us how to get rid of them in whatever way they attack us. Your job and our job is to liberate our fellow human beings from the influence and control of Satan and his demon aids and to teach them how to remain free. Jesus said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. That's Matthew 10, 8. All right, now, another little area of generality I want to cover. I, I, like, I would like to call that devil by any name that I could think of. But I do know from having been and still am in the military service, I'm in the reserves of the military, I learned something about our military service. If our nation in war captured a top general, they don't belittle that general. They may cross-examine him, they may do everything, but they still call him by his title. They respect that title even of an enemy that's captured. We are expected to rep not to love the devil, but to respect his title. When people say, old Slewfoot came around, it kind of something said, eh, 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 in me. Not that I'd love or have any respect for the devil, except I want to read you from the book of Jude, right back next to Revelation. I'm going to start with the fifth verse of the book of Jude and read you something that Almighty God says. And I think we must realize that if we'll stay in the order of things, we don't have to submit to the devil, but we still recognize that he is... He is a creature that originally was created by God. He was thrown out of heaven. He is the prince of this earth. He's an enemy of ours. 
uh, but there's a certain degree of uh, respect, not honor, but respect. Jude, the fifth verse. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, those are the evil spirits, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these having given themselves over to sexual immortality, immor immorality and gone after strange flesh are set, before, uh, set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal life. Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Now listen to this next verse, the ninth verse. Yet Michael, now Michael is the archangel who is, is the warrior angel. He's head over all the warring angels of God. And said, yet Michael, the archangel, is contending with the devil, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Don't go around rebuking the devil but you can rebuke his causes. Jesus rebuked fever that was in Peter's mother-in-law. He rebuked the fever, but he didn't rebuke the devil. You bind the devil, you don't rebuke him. When he is bound, you have all authority in heaven and earth, the authority given by Jesus Christ, the power of the spirit of the living God, which is all power. You have that power to bind the devil, cut his powers off from these demon angels he sends out to do his bidding and his work, and you can bind him from that particular situation. You can't bind devil from all of his activities, but if he uh, attacks somebody, possesses them, does something to a human being, you have all authority to clear that human being of those demon powers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now, this casting out devils is an unusual subject to discuss. It's exciting. It's venturesome. You have uh, unusual experiences when you're dealing with them. It's dangerous unless you know what you're doing. Not dangerous because the devil is danger to a spirit-filled person, but because of the imbalance that is brought in to teachings and understandings of how to deal with the devil. If you don't know how to deal with them, you can get off base and you can get yourself in some spirit problems with the devil, mentally, physically, and all kinds of ways that the devil can attack. So listen carefully to this teaching, get the book, read this, other good books by other authors that are spirit-filled authors. You can read them, learn things about the demon powers so that when you see a devil, you can recognize. I'll never forget our daughter, Spirit-filled in Oral Roberts University one time, called one night just as the film The Exorcist came out. Now, The Exorcist is a devil-inspired uh, film, a movie. And so our daughter called and she was excited. The students had all been talking about this exorcist and she said, Mom and Dad, I'm really praying about whether to go to this exorcist film so I will know more about how to cast out devils. Her daddy said one thing, Joni, do you go to the devil to find out how to cast out the devil or do you go to God to find out how to cast out a devil? Joni didn't go see the exorcist. Don't try to learn how to deal with the devil by the things of the devil. Read the 12th chapter of Matthew, and Jesus didn't cast out the devil by Beelzebub, uh, the power of the devil that uh, Jesus said. He said, that's a house divided against itself, and it'll fall. But Jesus cast out devils by the power of the Spirit of the living God. And when you cast out devils with that power, there's no greater power than the power of God. And devils don't have one little bit of authority over Jesus. They don't have one little bit of the power of the Holy Spirit. They do have power as being angels. God did not take the angelic power away from them. They have great and mighty power. They're referred to as powerful princes of peace, these powerful demon spirits. Uh, they are powerful, but we've got more power than they have. Hallelujah. Okay. Everything that you do in dealing with demons is given to us by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. God gave Jesus all power and all authority in heaven and earth. 
in the heavens. Generally, the spirits are, are between here and the heaven where God and Jesus live. They're up in the atmosphere someplace. We don't know where, but they're in that part of what's called the heavens. We know that because when, uh, when Daniel prayed to God and he asked for an answer from God, it took 21 days for that answer to get back down to Daniel. And the reason it did, uh, Gabriel uh, finally got down there at 21 days and he said, the instant you prayed, God heard you and sent me down here to give you the answer. But I ran into all these other demon angels up there, he said, and I couldn't get through. Now that's God's highest messenger angel. And so there's a communication line that's perfect between God and His angels, instant communication. There's no lack of knowledge. The Spirit of God monitors every event in the heavens and earth. God knows everything that is instantly, so there's no shortage of God's awareness of anything. And so God sent the angel Michael, the warring angel out. Didn't send Michael and 10,000 angels. He sent Michael all by himself. And Michael went down there and... <laughs> And those demons were scattered and then uh, Gabriel was allowed to come on through. Gabriel apparently is not a warring angel. There are assignments to angels, but these demon powers, the principal thing that apparently they do is to try to take the soul of a person. They want to defeat your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God. They want to rob your soul for eternity. Uh, that's their function. They're operating under the authority of the devil himself, Satan, Lucifer, uh, and all of these demons, probably millions if not billions of them. There are huge, vast numbers of them, innumerable uh, amounts of these demon angels. The devil's not uh, short of employees and he sends them out with great power to try to get in and control us and to take our faith away from believing in God. That's their function. So knowing that, we know how to come against them. Hallelujah. Uh, I realize that while we're on earth, even though we're male and female, yet in the spirit realm, there's no such thing as male and female. And when you're dealing with demon powers, you're neither male nor female now on earth. You're already in eternity. When you're walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, you gals, you are equal to men in every way. Therefore, you've got the same uh, responsibility as any man, big, little, medium, young, old, every one of us who believe have been given the direction, the command, the authority, the responsibility, and the privilege of casting out devils to free people from the bondage of the devil that will take people into eternal damnation. We are the ones who become the ones who free people so that Jesus can be the Savior of the world. He has assigned those responsibilities to us. We have the absolute authority. When God gave Jesus all power and all authority in heaven and earth, Jesus in the last chapter of Mark turned right around and he passed all of that power over to us. And so through that power that he gave, in my name they shall cast out devils, he said. That's Matthew 8, 16. Uh, and he said, you cast out spirits by his word. We're given authority to do these things, but we must be the ones who do it. God will not, Jesus will not. They could do anything they wanted to, but they set up a pattern and they made us the ones who are to do these jobs on earth. Jesus used very few words when he cast out devils. One word or just speaking two or three words, he cast them out. They always come out. I remember one time I was surprised that uh, a group of demons didn't come out one time. This is where the, uh, the 3,000 pigs, you remember the story about that? The demons, there was a whole legion of them in there. And uh, Jesus cast them out. And uh, they didn't come out. But they knew they had to. They just said, Jesus, it's not time for us to go into the pit. Let us go into the pigs. And he said, okay. They didn't say, Jesus, we refuse to come out. They knew that he spoke as a man with authority. They knew who Jesus was. They knew who Paul was. And they didn't know who some of these others had tried to come in, like the Skevasons, <laughs> the sons of Skeva. Uh, they didn't know about how to do this, but, uh, but they tried to do it by, by speaking what they heard somebody else do. You don't do it that way. You do it by the power of God and with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus said, use my name, that means his total authority. He is the Son of the living God. He is King of all kings. He is the Savior of the world. He's the one given a name that's above all other names, all the demon names, all the names of all the diseases. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ is high and lifted up above all of those, and He has all authority, but He placed that authority in, authority in you and me, and we have that authority to do it. 
uh, if you were driving down the street and you ran a red light or you speeded and the policeman came up, uh, he'll walk up to you and he'll show his badge and he'll say, let me see your license. And when he does that, uh, when you see that little badge, it may say PD Police Department number 176321. But if you look up on my, uh, my label right here, you'll see my police bag. It says number one, J-E-S-U-S. That's my authority. A policeman has authority to arrest you if you violate the law of the land. You don't have a right to question him. You can go into courts and say, you know, try to defend yourself, but if he's, if he's hooked you with the breaking of the law, he has all authority of his bosses, of his government above him to arrest you. He doesn't do it with his own good living. He does it because he's got a badge of authority. We have a badge of authority given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have authority to arrest the devil and all of his demon powers, cast him out, get rid of him. I want you to realize who you are in Christ Jesus. And it's because it's Christ Jesus living in you and you, uh, it is not I who live, but Christ Jesus who lives within me, then that's why we can do all of these things. We don't, we're not so hot shot. Uh, we just have God and Jesus living in us and we've got an assignment. We have authority given to it, to us to do these things. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is the word of God. And if we quote the word of God to the devil, he can't stand it. When he came out in the wilderness to tempt Jesus, Jesus merely spoke the word of God. He didn't have to give him excuses. He didn't have to tell the devil, I'm some big shot from heaven. He didn't have to say, I'm the son of God. He just spoke the word. It is written. And when he said that, three times he gave the scripture and the devil had to take off. That's the authority he's passing on to us. Behold, I give you power to tread on, not to wallow around in the devils, but to tread on them. You've got authority over them. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, the only problem with most of us, and uh, Francis and I have to be included, but not as much as we were a few years ago, the main problem is we don't believe we've got that authority. We don't act upon that authority. We don't have the compassion and the concern for people that the devil is taking to hell. And so we allow the devil to get away with all of these things he's doing, but we shouldn't do that. Francis and I, the more we learn about casting out devils, the more we see them come out, the more we see lives liberated and people turned on to Jesus, the more compassion comes, but the more urgency comes within us to get those devils out and to free people from the bondage of the devil. Use that power. Don't be afraid. Don't ever be afraid to cast out devils. Now, I may have shared this in another teaching, but one night we were in a big service uh, talking about uh, angels and talking about how you should go out and witness. And all of a sudden, around three walls there, visible to 12 people that gave uh, independent uh, same testimony, there were about 100 giant warrior angels, some eight feet tall, standing in formation, military formation around that room. And God spoke when we were sharing, go out and tell the good news. God said, when you go out and talk about my son Jesus, uh, to witness for him, don't be afraid because he said, I'll send one of these warrior angels to accompany you. If the devil can send out angels, God's got two to one that he can send out and you better believe you're surrounded by and protected by God's angels and you have that authority. So you're not alone. So don't be afraid when you're dealing with demons. Now, Francis shared this story in our, our book, uh, The First Demon That She Ever Cast Out. Well, I guess the first one we ever came across, and uh, we didn't do the casting out, but uh, this was barely after we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, maybe three or four months afterwards. And uh, we went to a church out in El Paso, Texas, and the pastor met us out on a parking lot. Uh, uh, this was about the second day we were there, I guess. The pastor had just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit the night before, and so uh, a young lady came out, uh, toward where we were out, out on the parking lot. And when she came up, the pastor said, Charles and Francis, I want you to meet and gave this girl's name. And so we started to love her and she said, ah! and she turned and ran as fast as she could. Well, we learned our first lesson on how to cast out demons. We said, pastor, would you go cast that devil out? 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. That guy didn't know what a devil was. I mean, he just had the baptism, and you don't really understand demons. But, you know, he didn't get to the service for about 30, 40 minutes, but he got the devil out, and she came in smiling. Hallelujah. And that's our first devil we cast out. <laughs> Praise God. Through somebody else. And, and one time I remember, uh, uh, just it was not long after that, we knew so little about casting out devils. Uh, when I was in high school, I guess, I broke this finger. And I don't know whether you can see it on television out there, but it's got a bend in it. And so I was ministering and uh, ministering to the sick. And this young girl, she came up. She had just been saved, just got to baptism. And she said, hold your finger out. And I did. And she said, devil, you come out of there, you crooked finger demon, come out of there. She had had a little bit of teaching. Now, it didn't really blend with my spirit. And that, that finger is still crooked, but it's a broken bone. It's not a demon at all, you see. And I felt sorry for that little gal. But she did meet somebody that knew more than we did that kind of got her teaching straightened out. And she was all right. Uh, one of my very first experiences, and don't look for this often. I've only seen it three or four times, and it's been years since I saw this, and maybe other people do, but one time I had a, uh, a girl come up, and uh, she was giving a fit to some of them. She came up to me for deliverance, and I looked into her eyes. Your eyes are the windows of your soul. And as I looked into her eyes, I saw something deep inside there. They looked like little monkey eyes. And it looked like that little monkey was just laughing up a storm at me. Ha, 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 ha. You don't know you got any authority. I mean, that was kind of what it's saying, but I didn't know that was it. And I looked those, and the hair stood up on my bald head. <laughs> Glory to God. I tell you, I saw eyes behind the eyes, and I knew it was a demon power, but I tried to cast it out, but that didn't succeed. But praise God, we were back in that area uh, later on, and I discovered that some pastor there that, <laughs> that knew how to do it got rid of those demons, and that girl was freed because immediately when I couldn't get it out, I said, God, send somebody that'll free that girl and teach me how to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, the first one that Francis recalls actually casting out, uh, it was a big executive, a high executive in a, in a company came up to her, and he came up for some sort of uh, healing or something, and we were babies again. Francis laid hands on him, and he went under the power of God, and he started choking. <laughs> and and uh, she didn't know what to do, but she just stood there and said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She knew that that name of Jesus was a name he used. She kept saying Jesus, and all of a sudden, <sighs> and he got up and he said, I didn't know that thing was in me. See, ignorance of a lot of things, but still God honored the simplicity of our belief. I remember one time we were ministering in a, uh, after a service, and we didn't have a lot of ministering room, and I had ministered the baptism while Francis began ministering the healing. And because of a shortage of time, she just had them all line up across the large room. And she just went by in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and touched them. And they were falling under the power. And by that time, I got, uh, got back out to that room. And somebody came running to me and said, there's a man over there choking to death. There's a man over there choking to death. Come help him somewhere. And I went over and I looked down at him. And I knew, I knew, I knew without a doubt that it was a demon spirit choking. You remember they choked them in the Bible? Well, when I saw that man choking, there was no reason for him to, and that was a gift of discerning of the spirits. When I recognized that, I just pointed down to him. I didn't even touch him. Francis had already done that, and said the demon was resisting coming out. The demon had been ordered to come out simply by the power of God. Francis didn't cast the devil out, but the demons can't stand the power of the Holy Spirit. So this guy choking it. He turned red. He just almost turned black in his face. And I said, devil, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. You choking devil, you come out in Jesus' name. I said, I said, come out in the name of Jesus and do it now. He said, oh, it almost got me. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, but we've got authority. Now, sometimes you wonder, is, are they going to come out or are they not? Jesus knew it. And so the more you cast out, then you see the success of it. You'll have some failures. I'll guarantee you about that. But don't worry about those. Praise God for the success and keep doing it, you see. The more you do, the more they'll come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've had some exciting hair-raising experiences. Didn't remove my hair that left before I knew about demons. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right now, Francis said, I'll tell you the truth when that happened to this executive. She said, I was shaking in my boots, but she didn't back up. And that's the important thing to remember in this. Don't back away from demons. They cannot hurt your soul because Jesus lives there. And you've got that authority. The only problem we have is the fact that we have unbelief or lack of knowledge of how to deal with them and recognize them. It's very important that you recognize the demons 
uh, and there's, we'll go into this to, to some degree here and how to recognize the devils because once you know it's the devil, just like that was a gift of discerning of spirits. I just knew from the Bible that they choked and I saw this guy choking. I knew that the power of God had hit him to put him under the power and a reasoning like that. Well, I just knew some way that that had to be a devil. And so that's when I cast it out and the man was freed, set free. Now, uh, a lot of people, uh, they, they don't really go ahead and do it. They just partially do it. And those are called partial believers. You know, I believe that the devil ought to come out, but I'm not going to try it, you see. Well, Jesus said, those who believe shall use my authority or my name to cast out devils. And so I just happen to believe everything the Bible says. And if I can get in there and learn it, there's a lot of things that are not in the Bible, but the principles are all in the Bible. Everything we need to live the holy life, to do everything that Jesus commanded us to do. It's all in the Bible, and you can depend on the Bible without exception of anything. Now, there was a case here of Jesus casting out a devil. This is, uh, uh, this is in Mark 9, 17 to 20, and I'll be reading from the Living Bible. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son for you to heal. He can't talk because he is possessed by a demon. And whenever the demon is in control of him, it dashes him to the ground and makes him foam at the mouth and grind his teeth and become rigid. So I begged your disciples to cast out the demons, but they couldn't do it. Aren't you glad to know that even the beginning disciples had problems like you and I do? But that doesn't stop me from trying it. I hope it never stops you from trying it. But don't get out into some of these wild places and do some crazy things because it won't do you any good, it'll do you harm. Uh, then he said, uh, Jesus said to his disciples, Oh, what tiny faith you have. How much longer must I be with you until you believe? Every time I read that, I think, Jesus, you're probably still saying that about Charles. Charles, how much longer do I have to tell you you've got all authority to cast out all these demons and heal all the sick? And, but I don't let condemnation come. You see, I keep trying to improve. And God's honoring that because he's increasing the number. Uh, Bring me the boy, he said. So they brought the boy, but when he saw Jesus, the demon convulsed the child horribly, and he, the boy, fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. Now, when a demon comes into the presence of someone that's filled with the Spirit of God, they react often, especially if they know you believe, and they'll know whether you know you believe or not. And so uh, many times when we lay hands on them, they'll fall quickly to the f floor. Sometime, one time I had a situation where a couple, they had filed for divorce, they hated each other, uh, but they still were holding on that last thread of hopes for salvation of their marriage, and so they flew halfway across the nation into Houston, and someone in our office talked to them a little bit that day, and they came for a miracle service that night. And so they came up to me for, uh, for ministry in their marriage. And I simply laid hands on both of them by the power of the Spirit of God. And I don't know what I prayed, but, uh, but she fell under the power of God. And he staggered back and didn't quite fall over, but the power of God hit him like a ton of bricks. And I looked at that woman when I said, uh, I, I cast this. She had, I had been told that she was considering suicide. She had attempted suicide. And when I said, you devil of suicide, come out of her in Jesus' name. While she was falling to the floor, she began to writhe just like a snake, just began to twist over. And while she's on the floor, she's still twisted. But it didn't last very long and pretty quick. She relaxed and a smile came on her face and the demon came out, you see, but he threw her to the floor. We see many demonstrations of these, but don't look for the demonstration. Just know by the Word of God that you've got the power to cast them out and believe that they should come out the minute you say to. Expect them to come out. We were one time very near to Houston, early again in our ministry, and that doesn't necessarily make us much better today, but we have learned a lot, and we're going to learn a lot more. And in the next year when you see us, we'll know more than we do today, and I hope you know a lot more than you do after today too. But uh, this woman was brought to us with cancer. She was right to, very close to the point of death and cancer. She was still walking, but we laid hands on her and cast the spirit of cancer out, and she fell under the power of God. And I remember it was a concrete floor. I can still see it there, but she started vomiting. Now, normally, vomit will kind of turn you off. But Francis and I are standing there, hallelujah, glory to God, look at that stuff come out. And she vomited up about two gallons of this brownish-looking stuff. It was almost like a solid mass, and uh, it was almost like you'd see a, uh, you know, a substance, a part of your body, but it was it vomited out. 
And uh, we stood there praising God for it. She got on up and she never had cancer anymore. See, it came out, it didn't stay in. And so uh, kind of be ready for anything in your ministry and don't get discouraged. Don't let anything throw you because God does a lot of different ways. Uh, but don't go around expecting everybody to vomit. When we were first into the, <laughs> well, yes, hey, some of you, I can hear you laughing. Some of you have already heard about these things. Uh, but I remember that, uh, Early in that ministry, there was a, a teaching went around, and praise God for teachers that are doing something. You say, don't feel that when we share some of these things, we're criticizing the people, because they were doing a lot more than we were, and they were doing all they knew. You may find some things to laugh about that we're teaching you today, a year or two from now, because uh, we, uh, well, like Francis said, we got that sign in the kitchen, Lord, make my words tender and gracious today, or tomorrow you may make me eat them, you see. But we do your best where you are now, stay in the Word of God, and if you make a mistake, God will correct you down the line, and it'll be all right. Well, they had this thing called the brown bag, movement. Uh, I mean, that's the way it came back to us non-believers, you see. We were not believers. But what they did, they would come in, and everybody that came to these deliverance meetings, they'd give them a brown bag, a vomit bag, if you please. And then, in case there was too much, they put little buckets, or like these, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, the, the buckets that too often are used for offerings, they put one of those at the end of each row, and then they passed a little clean napkin around everybody so that they could wipe it off as they vomit. And so everybody thought you had to vomit up demons. Uh, demons can go through walls, so <laughs> it's pretty neat, isn't it? No, it's not neat. Hallelujah. But they, they were doing their best, and I'm sure they got some people freed. But it was totally unnecessary. It wasn't the way Jesus did it, uh, and we don't have to do that. There's nothing in the Bible that says don't pass out vomit bags. But uh, nevertheless, I just don't see any reason for it. In fact, uh, you've got so much authority that y you can just tell them to quit doing anything you want to. Like uh, uh, often uh, 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 they'll talk back to you. A demon will talk back, and I want to cover it a little bit later on how they do this, uh, but they'll, they'll come up and you'll go up to somebody, a tender looking person, you know, and you come up uh, to pray for them, to minister to them some way, and all of a sudden they'll say, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And you'll think, man, I don't need to mess with that person. If they hate me, why should I love them back? But you see, remember this, that's the demon talking. It's not the person. Love those people. They need you. They need freedom. God has given you that chance to redeem their souls. You actually become in a likeness of Jesus, His power, His name, and His authority. You're not divine, but you actually become their redeemer in a sense. You're the one sent by Jesus to preach the gospel. You're the one to redeem them from it. And so uh, when this happens, you can tell them to shut up. Now, King James uh, use a little different language than shut up, but, uh, but we've actually done that. In the name of Jesus, shut up when they start screaming. And we've had that happen. One night, uh, we had right at the beginning of a service, we were on a high school stage, big stage there, and we asked everybody that had uh, certain kind of bondages or something to come up right now. Uh, and so we lined them up in rows across that stage. It must have been 300. It was a huge stage. So Francis and I just started down the line, and uh, we'd cast out the devil all over the microphone. We just started running and putting hands on them, and uh, over here and then over there and over here, three of them started screaming. Ah! A hideous screams. I mean, it, it just curls your spine almost. And, uh, and so we just walked over. I think Francis got one and I got two. I went over and said, in the name of Jesus, shut up. And they shut up just instantly. Well, the scripture for that is, Jesus said in Mark 1, 25, hold your peace and come out of him. Hold your peace. That's King James for shut up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. I like modern language better. Praise the Lord. Okay. But they don't have to talk back to you. But don't doubt when you go up there. Know that Jesus living in you, the Spirit of God living in you, that you're doing the work of Jesus, and Jesus is not afraid of demons. He knows who he is. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, when the Spirit caused the child to fall into the ground, uh, Mark tells us that Jesus asked the Father, how long has he been this way? I'm going to read this to you from uh, Mark 9, 21 to 27, the Living Bible. And he replied, Since he was very small, and the demon often makes him fall into the fire or into water to kill him. 
Oh, have mercy on us and do something if, if you can. If I can, Jesus asked. I wish I could say it with that much confidence. Somebody came up, can you get this demon out that's called this kid to be paralyzed and insane and all these things? Sometimes I think, well, if I can. <laughs> Jesus didn't hesitate. He said, if I can, Jesus asked, anything is possible if you have faith. The father instantly replied, I do have faith. Oh, help me to have more. When Jesus saw the crowd was growing, he rebuked the demon. Now, this is the case where Jesus actually rebuked this angel, demon angel. He didn't rebuke Satan, but he rebuked the demon angel. But Jesus also is the Lord, and so according to the Jude that I just read you, Jesus Christ can rebuke the devil, but we better say the Lord rebuke you if we get ready to do that. And so that little extra teaching thrown in there. Oh, demon of deafness and dumbness, he said, I command you to come out of this child and enter him no more. I'm going to stop there just a minute because uh, often I'll find myself using terms to that effect. You devil, come out in the name of Jesus and don't come back in him. As in King James and the Living Bible said, and enter him no more. But I believe they can come, I know they can come back, but it's generally because the people allow them to. I'll teach on that a little more, but most demons are in people because they in effect allow them or open themselves up to them and give an invitation even though they're not aware they're doing it. Then the demon screamed terribly and convulsed the boy again and left him. And the boy lay there limp and motionless to all appearances dead. A murmur ran through the crowd. He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up and was all right. Okay, now, the demons often tore bodies when they came out. They don't want to come out. They want to live in a warm body of a human. Apparently they can live at least for a short time in pigs because they went into the pigs and the pigs went into the lake and they didn't kill the demons. Don't worry, you cannot kill a demon. They live forever. They're God's created angels from the beginning. They'll never die. They'll always live. Excuse me, they'll just live in hell instead of in heaven. Uh, but right now they're free to work on earth. Now, Hallelujah. People without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying you cannot get a demon out because you can anoint with oil and pray for the sick. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit of God will still come down from heaven and do it. And Jesus sent the disciples out two by two before they received the power of the Holy Spirit but they took their oil with them and they came back and said the demons came out. So we know that not being spirit-filled, you can still get demons out. But just in the same way, you get uh, far less people healed and far less people de uh, delivered of demons when you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. Beware if you tie into a person that's got demon possession if you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. And so a little story that uh, Francis shared in the book, uh, there was this... Uh, demon-possessed old woman that was brought into this non-spirit-filled group of people. And so they had a, an empty building out a little ways away from where all the people were. So they all set it up and they chose a bunch of men to go out there and exercise this woman of these demons. And so they got out there and, uh, and can you imagine 100 and 200 pound men and this, this old woman, she's just picking them up and throwing them across the room upside of that. And hours went by and they came back and all these stories came back, you know. Uh, she threw us around. They came back scratched and they came back with their uh, clothes torn. They really had a battle on their hands and she went away demon possessed. They didn't know how to do it and they didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit. But uh, you can actually, I remember my brother who still does not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a minister for many, many years, now retired from uh, pastoring but still in ministry. And he said, boy, he said, Charles, uh, we had this person come up a demon possessed and we got a bunch of us and we tried to hold them down and throw us away and throw us out this way. And uh, he never did say they got the demon out, but he said they got, they got out, praise God, because uh, you sometimes wish you could because they, they're very powerful. See, uh, I believe an angel could, uh, we see it in the in book of Revelation. Angels are throwing things around. I believe they could pick up the earth and hurl it through the air. Angels have great power and God's power is given to them. So these demon angels have have power, but they don't have power over us. They can't throw us around if we believe and go ahead and cast them out. So just be quite aware that when you get ready to cast out a demon that you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in relation to a, uh, a spirit like cancer, Francis and I believe 
that as a general rule, and you can't go all the way because all knowledge is not given to mankind yet, but we believe that incurable diseases are caused directly by a demon attacking your body. You can be a spirit-filled Christian and the demons can attack you. A demon cannot live in your spirit if you're born again. A demon cannot possess your soul and spirit if Jesus lives there. It says that Jesus won't even eat at the same table with the devil. But demons can attack the bodies and minds of Christians. Otherwise, if you couldn't be attacked by that, you would have no sicknesses. You would have no incurable diseases. It's the demon powers that do this. Yes, you can be killed in an accident or many other ways uh, you can die. You can have sicknesses that are not directly uh, put on you by demons. You can drink uh, water that's got typhoid germs in it and you'll catch typhoid fever. You can stick your finger out in front of a rattlesnake, let him bite you, and you're going to suffer. Now, the demon might make you put your finger out that way or else you're pretty stupid to do it. But nevertheless, it's not the devil that possesses you to bring out poison. That's other ways sickness is coming. Sickness is all here because the devil brought sickness into the world. There's no sickness in heaven. When we get there, there will be no sickness. God kept the Jews healthy for 40 years. He kept the devil power away from them, even though they were sinning all the time and distrusting him. But now, uh, because of, uh, of the, uh, the power of God, the name of Jesus being above all these, na and, uh, all these other demons, uh, we have that, uh, that power to deal with these incurable diseases. Uh, Jesus called demons by what they did. He didn't go around saying, name yourself and all of this. One time Jesus said, name yourself, and there was a legion. He said, I'm legion. Legion uh, has different uh, meanings and different civilizations and all. And, uh, and you see some writings say it could be a thousand demons, could have been 4,000 demons or something, all kind of figures like that. But there were many, many, many demons in that one person. When Jesus said, name yourself, what's your name? They said, legion. And I'm sure he had a purpose for asking that. But Jesus didn't sit down in a rocking chair there and say, okay, now you 4,000 demons, one at a time, name yourself. He just said, come out. And all of them came out at one time, you see. You don't have to ask them to name themselves. Jesus called demons by what they did. He said, you deaf spirit come out, you blind spirit come out, you dumb spirit come out, you epileptic spirit come out, you insane spirit come out. Now we believe that these are incurable diseases. You cannot fight the principalities and powers with things of the flesh, the Bible tells us. Therefore, if you're a doctor and you're not spirit-filled, then you can't fight, you can't even find out, you can't even recognize what is the cause, and therefore you can't find a cure for diseases that are directly brought about by a demon spirit putting on you. Uh, I taught uh, in this series on casting out the spirit of death in the event of stroke. The only reason I knew that was God spoke words to me. And so then faith cometh by hearing God speak to you, and hearing God speak to you comes because you stay in the Word of God. And then, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. But I had heard God that time, and that's the way I got the discerning of spirits for healing strokes. But there are many other ways that you can come into understanding the, uh, what their names are, what they cause. But generally, if somebody comes up and they've got cancer, they've got diabetes, they've got arthritis, uh, bursitis, these things that they go to the doctors, and the doctors can give you uh, something to maybe alleviate the pain for arthritis. They can give you anison or something that'll help or inject you with cortisone or things of this nature. They have ways of trying to help you, but they cannot cure you. We believe those to be a direct uh, attack by the demon powers to bring sickness upon you. And so we cast out devils when anybody comes up with an incurable disease. We cast them out. Now, that's why Jesus has a name that's above all these names. But sometimes you have to do a second thing. If somebody comes up, like with scoliosis I mentioned before, they've got a curvature of the spine and you cast the spirit of scoliosis out, that spirit will leave, but they still may have a crooked spine and you can command that spine to straighten up. So you may have to apply more than one method of healing. Generally speaking, when you cast a devil out, the person is healed just like that. Their body may have to recover. If cancer has taken 100 pounds of weight off of you and 
and eating up cells inside and they've had to operate and, and uh, cut you up and everything, then if you cast the devil out, you've still got all those other things that have to be healed in some way. We've had people that have had surgery uh, that left scars and the scars cause pain to still be there years later. We cast the demon of, of cancer out, for example, and it will ca cast the spirit of pain out too because demons can cause pain in your body. Now, in, in dealing with that, you, you can know that, generally speaking, then you recognize devils by what they do. Now, another discerning of spirits that uh, I think it'll help you to understand. I'm giving just uh, a little bit of examples in here. Uh, we were ministering one time, and uh, uh, we called out a word of knowledge, uh, just calling out in the audience, someone here has got very, very serious arthritis in your body. Will you come up here? And a lady, something over 60 years old, a very uh, a heavy woman came up, and uh, I started to lay hands, and uh, she said, I hurt all over. And when I started to lay hands on them, she said, Don't touch me. Don't touch me. It hurts. It hurts. Please don't touch me. And I felt so sorry for that poor woman. And all of a sudden, I said, You whining devils, come out of her. And I laid hands. She went under the power of God. When she got up, you could touch her any place. You see, that was the devil talking to me. That wasn't her. Now, again, I'll explain more in detail. Uh, and a little later in this hour of teaching, this session of teaching on demons. But I had the discerning of spirits. How did I do that? I really don't know except I know. <laughs> I knew that it was there. First of all, it was arthritis. In some way, in the spirit sense, I recognized that it just doesn't generally hurt people that much. I suppose there are types of arthritis that if you touch them, it would hurt them. But generally, you can touch people lightly with arthritis. And I never do lay hands on somebody hard. I very gently lay hands on people because all you have to do is turn that light switch on and let the power flow. You don't have to give them a Pentecostal massage. Just <laughs> simply, uh, it's the power of God. It's not your power that's going to do it anyway. And so because of this... Uh, uh, I recognized some way that knowing it was arthritis, knowing that that was a spirit, and seeing that she was uh, resisting something, the devil wants you to be deceived so that you won't get the job done. And he'll use any tactic he can to, to confuse you, to keep you from going all the way to get these demons out. And so that was this demon was actually speaking to me, saying, don't touch me. It wasn't the woman at all. And so, uh, by the way, she got up just as bad with arthritis as she was when she went under the power. But the next morning, she came up to us, and she was jumping up and down. She was moving her hand. She said, about 2 o'clock last night, I was laying there in bed awake, hurting, and all of a sudden, every joint in my body started cracking and popping. And she said, all that arthritis is gone. I don't have anything left. You see, that spirit had caused that, but it took a few hours for the effects of it to go away. Hallelujah. The demon went away, but the effects of it was there. Glory to God. I love to work in the supernatural. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, a uh, demon, I believe, can move around. But well, let me give you one more discerning of spirits while I'm on that subject, lest I forget to clear it. Uh, I, French and I used to be operating as elders in a large church in Houston, and uh, they had a, a big altar bench up there. And as elders, uh, we and some 25 people uh, would go down in this big church, and we'd kneel down on one side of the altar, and the people uh, during the worship time would be brought up. They could come up for healing or ministry of any kind. And so I was down there one morning and a lady came up to me and she said, I turned my back on God about 25 years ago and I want to get right with God. And I said, oh, praise the Lord. Pray this prayer. I said, dear Lord Jesus. And she said, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for turning my back on God. Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And I said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Then I said something else. Be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I said, now, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit so you'll have power to recognize uh, these things so that you can keep the devil from causing you to backslide again and go back into sin. And so uh, I have a little short course in ministering the baptism, and I just said, now, I'm going to lay hands on you. The power of God's going to go in you. I'm going to ask Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then I want you to begin to love God, but not in English by giving some praise sounds to God like this. He caught up a hashila mato. That's my short course. And so I started to lay hands. She said, I'm not going to do that. And I thought I had me somebody like I used to be that didn't believe in tongues. I really thought that. And I thought, man, she doesn't believe in tongues. And the pastor said, don't spend more than a few, you know, no more than a minute. If you need more than time than that, counsel with them after the service. But I really thought, well, man, here's somebody just turned off on tongues. But all of a sudden, that discerning of spirits that came in, 
I touched her on the forehead and I said, you religious spirit, come out of her in the name of Jesus. And she just lifted her hands up. See, the devil doesn't want you to have power, and the devil tried to deceive me. That's part of his job. He's a robber, a thief, a destroyer, a deceiver. And the devil tried to convince me in my mind that this woman just didn't believe. But the devil was the one that didn't want this to happen, and he didn't want me to believe. But I won. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. All right, now, we believe that uh, in a situation like cancer, and we do not have enough evidence to say this is so, but we believe it. Uh, if my daddy planted a seed, a sperm, with my life in it into the womb of my mother, that little seed begins to multiply and grow. Your body has uh, cells in it that multiply and grow. And we believe that a demon spirit can do the negative miracle, I like to call them negative miracles, there's nothing that will ever bless you, but they will plant a seed of cancer or something to that effect. Plant that seed into your bloodstream or into your bone marrow, wherever they might want to plant it, and that seed will multiply in that body. Now the marrow of your bone is the manufacturer of blood. And if a demon power gets in there and that seeds start multiplying and the doctors say, well, the, what is the white blood cells multiply too fast and eat up the red blood cells? It's a fast uh, multiplication of cells. It's a runaway wild cells that happen. Uh, we believe that the demons can plant a cell in there that will grow rapidly and cause uh, the disease that's named cancer. Now, in a case like that, and we, we talked to another evangelist one time that felt that he had heard from God about this, in the event you have something like that, then what we normally pray when we uh, minister healing to someone with cancer, we'll say, Devil, I bind you by the power of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. You read Matthew, the 12th chapter, and you'll find that that's basically what it is. I'll share on that a little bit more later. But you bind the devil and say, In the name of Jesus, you spirit of cancer, come out. You call it by what it does. The doctors call it cancer. You call it cancer. The demon knows what it's doing. His name may be certainly not Charles, but it may be some other name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the demon, uh, the demon will come on out then at your command if you believe. Then we say, in the name of Jesus, we curse that seed and we command you to die in the name of Jesus and not reproduce yourself. In Jesus' name, we command all the damage you've done to be healed in the name of Jesus. And then we say, in the name of Jesus, we command that marrow of the bone to produce pure blood and send forth through that body and heal that person. See, your blood has got healing power to it in its own normal way. So they have to keep replacing blood in a cancer patient to keep the... Uh, cells from eating, uh, eating the other ones up. Now, I'm not sure I'm technically right. Okay, now we had a case where a spirit-filled doctor, uh, his record uh, of healing cancer was so good that some of the other doctors in the community and this big hospital were sending their terminal patients over to him. And he had the best record of all. You know why? When he got in there, he would go into surgery and he'd be praying in tongues and he'd be doing his surgery, the things that he's supposed to do with the skill of a physician. And while he's praying in tongues, he'll say, Devil, I bind you by the power of the Spirit of God. Now you devils of cancer come out. And he'd cut out those uh, damaged cells and all and worked. And so he had a tremendous uh, success in that because he cast the devils out. Hallelujah. So that's, that's something you need to know. Um, another medical doctor gave us something. I'm going to read this. He said it has to do with uh, uh, discerning of spirits and believing uh, that, uh, that you can actually succeed, but uh, relating to incurable diseases being caused by demon powers. In this day and age in which we are, are leading men, uh, start over. In this day and age in which we are landing men on the moon and are looking at DNA molecules through microscopes, I consider that those diseases which we cannot understand and which we claim as incurable must have their origin elsewhere than in science. DNA molecules are chromosomes that carry the hereditary factors, genes, which are of DNA. Now, we believe that those uh, other sources are demon powers. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies, the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings, and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world, and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. That's Ephesians 6, 12. We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against demon powers. Glory to God. Give Jesus a hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.